Hey, how's it going? Alex here from Idea Spot, and today we have a Cadence Theme Headers tutorial. Now, we're using the free version of Cadence, but it includes so many headers features that I think we really just needed to do a separate video just on the headers here. So we're going to be looking at transparent headers. We're going to be looking at sticky headers like I've got going here. So if this sounds interesting, then keep watching. Okay, for the tutorial, we are going to be using a Cadence starter template. Now, I have done a complete tutorial on setting up a website using one of these. I'll link that in the description. I'm going to be using Agency just because that one is my favorite, but all of these look pretty good. This one and this one include a transparent header by default, so that's good too, but you can add transparent headers to any Cadence starter template. That's totally doable as well, so let's get started. So this is what the starter template looks like. Now this page and all pages use transparent headers and by default the blog posts use the regular header. So this is what the regular header looks like. This is what the transparent header looks like. On all the pages you'll see transparent headers. You can actually edit any page as well and you can manually set these to be the regular header if you like the regular header on a certain page. So by clicking page settings there transparent header you can actually disable the transparent header click update and then when we view the page you'll see that it's changed back to the regular header so any page can do that I'll just change that one back to the transparent header again and just change that back to default there we go back to normal so that's probably the most important thing to notice when you're first starting out is that we basically have two headers to work with, a transparent header and a regular header. We can apply these to whichever pages we like. So let's get into the customizer and let's start working on these headers. Here we are in the customizer. Let's start working on this header. The first thing I might do is the logo here. So I'm going to click that shortcut. Let's change that logo. And here we can upload files to our media library. I'm going to drop in a few files, some logos and things that we can use later. So you can just drop them in and wait for those to upload. So I've just uploaded some stock images, a couple of logos I made up and some background images we might use later. So let's get started. Let's try using this white light bulb logo for our header. We can skip cropping if we already have the right size on our logo. And there we go. We'll notice it hasn't changed yet because we have applied this to the regular header, not the transparent header. So we're going to have to do the transparent header as well. To do that, we can just go back one and go to transparent header and we can change the transparent header logo as well. So let's grab that logo and apply it to our transparent header too. There we go. Okay, now back on our logo, we can do a few other things here. By default, it's saying idea spot tutorials. That's our site title. We can drop that down to maybe just saying idea spot. Um, the tagline is just another WordPress site. That will be the default tagline whenever you install WordPress. So let's just change that, shall we? I might call it uh, WordPress tutorials. There we go. And from here, we have a few choices about how we display this. So we can actually just have the logo by itself. We can have the logo and the tagline and the title or just the logo and the title. And then there's a few different layouts as well that we can have here. So lots of different combos you can go through. So I think this is pretty cool. So let's actually see how we go with just the logo by itself. If you want to change the size of the logo, that's doable here. You can increase or decrease the size. Um, I actually just like the default size. So I'm going to leave it how it was. And let's click publish when we're happy with our changes. One thing I would like to change here is there is some white space on either side of our header. If we click the header area shortcut there, we can make that full width. So there's a few choices here, standard, contained, and full width. So contained is like that, standard, and full width. So I think full width looks best in most cases. Okay, now let's have a look at the header layout. Now this is where Cadence theme really comes into its own because the customizability is very, very versatile. We've actually got three rows and we've got three different areas that we can add functions to in the header. So we've basically got nine areas in the header. At the moment, we're only using two. We're only using the logo there and the primary navigation, but we can add lots of things in there. For example, um, secondary navigation, we can add a different menu. We can add search and we can add buttons, custom HTML, social icons. And if you've got WooCommerce installed, you can add the cart as well. So let's go ahead and add some of these things in. So I'm going to add the cart there to the top row. We can just drag that where we want to drag it. And every item on the header has its own design icon there as well. So if you click settings, 
you can go to the design. So for example, let's go to the cart, let's go to the design and we can change the colors and we can change the formatting. So for our cart colors, we've got our initial color and the hover color. So let's go for white for our initial color or maybe a little bit of a, an off white to match the rest of that menu there. And then for the hover color, I actually think the gray might be the way to go in this scenario. Definitely use the global colors wherever possible because then when we, we want to edit the global colors, we can actually go to the palette at any time under general and colors and you can customize the colors. And then when you flip around between the color palettes, it will automatically change any global colors to match the colors from the palette. So you don't have to rework things when you want to change colors. So I think that's really, really cool. Uh, let's go back to that icon and we've got this show item indicator. I'm going to turn that one off, but that will show how many things are in the cart. And we've got two icons that we can use the regular cart and the shopping bag, depending on the style of your store. I think I actually prefer the cart. So when you're happy with everything, click publish. All right, next thing we'll cover are the social icons. So let's add some social icons here. So there we go. We've got Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram by default. We can click the gear there and we can customize this. First thing you'll obviously want to do here is set up the links to make sure they're actually linking to your relevant social media accounts. So it's just a matter of pasting the correct link in there. So for my Facebook, I'll just paste in the Facebook link to my Facebook page and then click publish. But scrolling through, it looks like all the major ones are covered here. And especially they've got uh, email and telephone as well, which is cool. So set those up in terms of what you want to use on your site. Now let's go back to our header layout again. So I don't really want them to be there. I'd like, what I might try is putting the logo into the middle and put the social icons across there. So next thing we can look at is the design of these. Now they've got size, they've got style. I think the outline style looks pretty cool actually without the boxes, but you can have a filled box and you can change that radius. So. Um, by default, you've got a little bit of a three pixel curve on the corners. You can make that sharp by reducing it to zero, or you can make it completely round by increasing it. Now, it doesn't seem to be updating live, but if you click publish and then reload the page, you should be able to see what that looks like. So let's just reload that page and see if we can get our new border outline. There we go. So we've got round borders because we set that to 17 pixels. Now, we can wind that back to where it was before and just have a slightly round border. Again, you'd have to reload that. It'd be nice if that updated live, but there we go, back to the slightly rounded borders. Now, I do like the outline style as well. By default, they've got that black color to them. We can actually change the initial color and the hover color as well. So again, I like to use that whitish color or maybe the off-white color, a little bit more subtle and then have the hover color as the gray. So there we go. I think that looks quite good. Let's see it publish. Next thing I might look at is the custom HTML. So let's choose HTML there. And there you can actually insert HTML. So you can paste anything you want in there. You can have links, you can have pictures. You can even put short codes in there and link them to other plugins and widgets. So very flexible. I'm just gonna put some text in there. Uh, welcome to Ideaspot WordPress tutorials. And let's have a look at what we can do with the design here. So the font, it's just inheriting the default fonts. We can change the colors to that global uh, slightly gray color to match the rest of our colors. We can add a little bit of margin here. So I might add like a little bit of top margin, bring everything down a little bit. Lots of things we can do. And we're free to move that around to any of these nine positions. So I might drop it down there, for example. And like I said before, Instead of just using text or links, we can actually add some more complicated stuff. I might try this. Let's actually try adding a short code. So I've set up in contact form seven, for example, I've got a short code for a little email contact form. Let's see if we can paste that in and see what happens. So I'm gonna paste in a short code there for an email signup form. And we could drag that around and uh, have an email signup form in our header, for example, if we wanted to do that. If we were doing an ebook or um, joining up a newsletter, we could pop that in the header. So lots of cool things we can do. I might just remove that one. I like to keep it fairly simple, one row, but we've got three rows to work with. So you can do lots and lots of things with all these positions. 
Now, the other thing we had to look at were button and search. So search is very simple. Search is just a little search icon. We can add that. I might pop that over there next to the cart and we can customize the style of that. Uh, there's a couple little difference, very subtle difference between those two icons actually. And then the design, again, we can change the colors, but you will notice that these are blue and gray, but here they are white. Now the white is the navigation color for the transparent header. These colors are only for the regular header. If we go to our regular header that's used in our blog post, we can see we've got a gray search icon. So if you did want to change your navigation colors, you can get there through, uh, we go back to transparent header and we go to design and you've got navigation colors here. You can change that to whichever color you like for your navigation, but I like how it was before. I'm gonna go back to search there. And we'd only be able to adjust those for the regular header. Now I will work on the regular header a bit. I think the best way to deal with this is to customize this regular header and give it a similar look to our transparent header. That is have a color background and use white. So it looks congruent with the rest of the design on the website. So let's actually hit customize on our regular header and let's see what we can do with this regular header. So I'm gonna click on the pencil for the, this is for the main row. We can actually do the whole header we go back to the customizing the header, click design, and we're going to change our header background and add a gradient. So I want that to match the gradient that we use on our palette. So we can choose those two colors. And there we go. So that's almost looking pretty good. We do want to change those navigation colors and that search icon. So let's go there and let's change the primary navigation colors. I want the initial color to be that soft gray and I'd like the hover color to be the darker gray. So that's pretty cool. And the initial color, I might leave that as a, a soft gray as well. And let's hit publish. Last thing to do is just the search icon there. Again, we're gonna use the light gray and I might use that gray for the mouse over. So that looks pretty cool. Okay, let's hit publish. So that's covered off on our features for our header. What we can actually look at is the tablet and mobile view as well while we're here. So this has just been on desktop view. Tablet and mobile view is a very similar process. We've got our logo there and we've got a trigger for the mobile menu. So that pops out a mobile menu and we can do a bit of customization again by clicking that. And there's three different hamburger styles. You can have the three dots, three thick lines and the three uh, lines with a curved edge there. And we can choose design. By default, we've got gray and blue. I might change that to uh, the light gray and darker gray to match our other navigation style. So that looks pretty decent. Let's hit publish. And we can add extra features the same way as we add them to the desktop menu as well. So I'm gonna add that cart icon back in there, for example, there we go. Again, we do have to customize that cart icon again, so we can click there. I'm gonna change it back to cart, change that cart color to uh, the initial gray and the hover color gray as well. Hit publish. And I didn't want that indicator on there and I want them to be in opposite order so I can just drag them around. And there we go, so you get the idea. Repeating the same process, we set up our mobile menu. Now back on desktop, there is another cool feature very surprising to get this in a free theme, sticky header. So sticky header is uh, when we scroll, we can actually get the header to scroll down the screen along with the browser. So let's so have a look at how that is set up. So to get there, we're under uh, header and we go to sticky header and we can enable the sticky header. So we can just say the only the main row, for example, is a sticky header. And when we scroll, the header stays on the top of the screen. So that is a pretty cool feature. I don't use it on many websites to be honest, but uh, I think a lot of people do like this. It's quite a trendy design. So sticky header, pretty cool. And you can apply that to different parts of the header, for example. So let's say we only wanted to scroll uh, the primary navigation. So I might put that primary navigation down there, for example. And then we could say only the bottom row is sticky. So now when we scroll, it's just the navigation. So that might actually help the user experience in terms of keeping that navigation there, especially if you have a lot of pages or very long pages, it can be good to use that sticky header in that way. So very nice to include that for free, very cool. Let's hit publish. 
In terms of our sticky header design, as we scroll down, we can actually uh, change the sticky header background. So it's inheriting the regular sticky header background from the regular header. So if that makes sense, we can go ahead, choose our gradient again, and let's change to a different gradient, for example. So we can have, let's go with, we'll go with the same colors, but what I wanna do here is actually, we can add a bit of transparency. So we could make that, um, I'm gonna make that halfway transparent. So as you scroll down, you can see your text doesn't obscure uh, what's behind it completely. So that is a pretty cool little thing we can do. It's probably a little bit too much transparency, but I think most people, when they use a uh, sticky header, it's nice to add just a little bit of transparency so you can see that it's actually scrolling above the background there. Very interesting adding these things in. So in this case, I added just, um, looking at that, I've got 90% transparency, I think. Yes, 90% transparency on that one. And on this one, I can add the same. 90%, 90% opacity actually, not transparency. Um, so same effect on that light blue. I might bump that a little bit more, I think, we want that effect to be very subtle. So 95 and 95, there we go, let's hit publish. So back to those sticky header options, quite a few little choices there. So we can just, we can scroll the complete header, we can scroll just the bottom row. I quite like that. So we're just scrolling just the navigation. I think that's quite useful. Um, you can do the top and the main row and uh, you can get that just how you want. So very, very versatile. Now, I quite like using only bottom row because it doesn't take up too much screen real estate, if that makes sense. But if you did want to use the actual um, top row and the main row or um, the whole thing, for example, let's shuffle this back where it was before. Let's put that primary navigation back up the top there. There we go. Now, let's say we wanted to do the whole main row as the sticky header. So we select only main row there. And we can actually enable main row shrinking. So by default, we've got an 80 uh, header at the top. And as we scroll down, that will shrink down to 60. So it won't take up quite as much space. Now that can be quite useful if you had a quite a big, like 120 main header, and you could shrink that down as we scroll. It doesn't take up as much space. So I think that's pretty cool as well. I honestly preferred what we had before with the navigation down there and just having the bottom sticky. I thought that was a little bit better. Yeah, I quite prefer this setup. So let's hit publish. So from here, you've got all the skills you need to design these headers. I'm quite satisfied with this and very impressed with the range of features for a free theme in terms of having the sticky and transparent header options with all those different areas you can place uh, header features. So very cool from Cadence. So that wraps up our tutorial on building headers in Cadence. If you wanna learn more about Cadence, I have a video where I set up a starter template from scratch where you will learn how to do that. And I also have a tutorial where we set up WooCommerce in Cadence as well. Both of those should be pretty useful if you're just starting out. Hopefully this one's been useful too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.